Well, this is the first problem set and uh, just important problems on approximations and significant figures. And uh, we're, I'm expecting maybe do 10 problems so you know the meaning of all these terms and how to practice those. So let's go. Here's the first one that talks about the speed limit on some interstate highways is roughly 100 kilometers per hour. And uh, what is this in meters per second? See, many times in physics, you got to change units from one into another. And here, you give on the speed in 100 kilometers per hour. You got to change it into meter per second. Now, how do we do that? First of all, 100 kilometer per hour times, we know that uh, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And then one hour is 3600 seconds, right? So when you do that, you get 27.77 meter per second. But when you look at the significant figures, you find that, you know, the, the, the number given, which is 100 kilometer per hour, only had three significant figures. So the final answer can only have three significant figures. So that's 27.8 meter per second. Alright, this takes us to the second question, and uh, the second question here, now before that, I decided to change this into miles per hour, so 100 kilometers per hour times 1 mile is 1.609 kilometers, so when you do that, you get 62 miles per hour, so that was question number 1. Now, in question number 2, the, this is a measuring tape and it says it's off by 0 0.50 centimeters and you're trying to measure a distance of 20 meters. What is the percent uncertainty? So you have the two numbers, 0 0.50 centimeters and you're trying to measure a distance of 20 meters. Therefore, the percent uncertainty is the difference, that is delta in the change, delta L by L times 100. Here it is 0 0.50 centimeters by 20 meters, but then one meter is 100 centimeters. And because it's in a percent, uh, you multiply it with 100 and finally you get it as 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 percent. So that's the uncertainty. Number three, uh, suppose a person has an average heart rate of, how much is that, 720 beats per minute. How many does he or she have in two years, actually 2.0 years, in 2.00 years, and in 2.000 years. So this is more to do with significant figures. There are three parts here. The first part. 72.0 beats in one minute, right? And there are 60 minutes in one hour and 24 hours in one day times 365.25 days in a year. And you got to find out in 2.0 years. So you multiply by 2.0, you get the Number is 7.5738 times 10 to the 7 beats. Okay, so that's the actual number we got. So number, now A, it, it's given us 2.0 years. So there can only be two sig significant figures there. That's why it's 7.6. And that's limited by 2.0. In B, you can write it as 7.57 times 10 to the 7 beats because it's 2.00. There are three significant figures. And when you come to the third one, it's limited by what is actually given. It's given as 72.0. And therefore, although C seems to have four significant figures in 2.000, you cannot use that because you go for the smaller number and the smaller number is 3 in 72.0. Therefore, it's 7.57 times 10 to the 7 beats.
That brings us to the fourth one. And in this question it says, what is the area of a circle? Uh, 3.102 centimeters in diameter. How do you find the area? What's the formula for area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared. And where r is the radius, of course. And in this case, what's given is the diameter. So you've got to divide it by 2. To get it as 3.102 centimeters by 2. And then pi times that number and you square it. Which gives you 7.55 centimeters squared. And notice that the final answer has four significant figures because what was given was 3.102, which again has four significant figures. Brings us to the fifth question. The length and width of a rectangular room are given and you got to calculate the area of the room and its uncertainty in square meters. Now this is an important question because to find the area, you're going to find, uh, you're going to multiply the length with the width. And whenever you multiply, uh, to find the total uncertainty, you're not going to multiply the uncertainties, rather you're going to add them, as you see now. Now let's find the actual area of the room first. The area of the room is 3.995 meter times 3.050 meter, which is 12.06 meters squared and the uncertainty in the width is remember it has to be in meters so it's 0 0.005 meter divided by 3.050 times 100 that is 0 0.16 percent and then the percentage uncertainty in the length again that is well, that was 0 0.005. Okay, so 0 0.005 by 3.955, this times, times 100, and you get 0.13%. Now, after you get the uncertainties in both of them, to find the uncertainty in the area, you add the two. That's the important part. So, if the formula is a product, when you find the uncertainty, you actually add the uncertainties to get 0.29% which is 0.3% all right and uh, which means it's actually 0.29% over 100 times the actual area what was that the actual area was 12.06 so it's 0 0.035 meters squared when you consider the significant uh, figures there is only two so it's 0 0.04 meter squared. Therefore the area is 12.06 plus or minus 0.04 meter squared. Brings us to the sixth question. How many heartbeats does a person have in a lifetime? Let's calculate that number. How many heartbeats does a human being have in a lifetime? All right, one lifetime times 10 to the 9 seconds in a half a lifetime times 1 heartbeat per second, roughly. And therefore you get it as 2 times 10 to the 9 heartbeats in a lifetime. That was easy. And number 7, approximately how many atoms thick is a cell membrane, assuming that all atoms average about twice the size of a hydrogen atom. So in this question we're trying to find the the thickness of a cell membrane in terms of the number of hydrogen atoms. All right, so diameter of the membrane divided by diameter of the atom is equal to 2 times dH because dH is the diameter of the hydrogen atom and uh, the membrane has a size of about 10 to the negative 8 meters so that is divided by 2 times 10 to the power negative 10 meter per atom now, remember that's the size of the, the diameter of the hydrogen atom 
And so, since the problem says it's twice, that's why we multiply with that. When you calculate this, you get about 50 atoms. So, the thickness of a cell membrane is about 50 atoms. Number eight, we're going to find the number of cells in a hummingbird, assuming that the mass of an average cell is 10 times the mass of a bacterium. I'm making the same assumption. How many cells are there in a human being? Okay. So we have to find the number of cells in a hummingbird. Take the mass of a hummingbird as about 10 to the negative 10, I mean 10 to the negative 2 kilograms. 1 by hundredth of a kilogram. That's about 10 grams. And 10 times 10 to the negative 15 kilogram is the mass of a bacterium. So when you do that, you get 10 to the power 12 cells in a hummingbird. Now for the human being, again, the mass of a person is approximately 100 kilograms. That's 10 to the 2 for a person and divided by 10 times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms which is the mass of a bacterium and you get 10 to the power 16 cells per person. So compared to the hummingbird the human being has 10,000 times more cells in the body. Alright number nine we're assuming that one nerve impulse must end before another begins. What is the maximum firing rate of a nerve in impulses per second. So, uh, rather, how many nerve impulses are produced in one second? Okay. Now, let's look at this. One nerve impulse takes about 10 to the negative 3 seconds. That means there are 10 to the 3 nerve impulses in a second. Wasn't that direct? because a nerve impulse is so fast that it only takes one by thousandth of a second. Therefore, there are a thousand impulses in one second. That's how fast that is. Brings us to the last and quite an easy question here. You gotta find out how many significant figures are proper in the results of the following calculations. All right, first time, You have 98.2 and 1.01 and therefore it's 3. Because what you're doing is 98.2 in the top has 3 significant figures. 1.01 also has 3 significant figures. Therefore the answer can only have the lower number which is 3. In the second one the number is 18.7 and you're squaring it so it has three significant figures certainly and in the in the third one 1.60 that's only three significant figures but 3712 has four it doesn't matter you go for the smaller number which is three and so those are the answers to the 10 questions in problem set one to do with chapter one and I hope you understand all these questions and look at them and try to study them. Good luck and goodbye.